Lada was set up in the 60s to make an affordable people's car for the communist world, the Volkswagen of the Soviet Union. Today, it is still going strong. When the cars come off the production line, they immediately test drive them. And they've told me that I can uh, ride along. Lada is one of the few major factories in Russia that managed to survive the collapse of the Soviet Union and the financial crisis of 2008. There we go. The 27 millionth and something Lada rolls off the production line. There he goes. It has been a tough couple of decades, though. During the bleakest times, Lada couldn't afford to pay some salaries, but most of its employees continued to work for nothing. Why do you think people were so loyal to Lada? <laughs> so what made you? Stick by the company. Patriotism. Everyone I met showed a loyalty that rival car manufacturers around the world would give their eye teeth for. And it's not only the factory workers. Oh my word, look at this. Some local enthusiasts have taken their love of Lada to whole new heights. Guys, I love your cars, but I don't like the weather. <laughs> so all of these cars are larders, yeah? These were some seriously pimped up people's cars. <laughs> that is fantastic. It's like a kind of Lamborghini larder. A sign that local loyalties are now being matched by individuality and creative expression in post-communist Russia. Look at this bad boy. It's amazing. <laughs> Monster Lada. And I suppose it shows the car culture here in Russia is similar to elsewhere in the world. You've got nutters who'll do almost anything to make their car stand out. And it doesn't get much crazier than this beast. Oh, fuck it, see. This is proper boy yeah, late as well. <laughs> A gun going off. It's like somebody firing a gun. <laughs> it's fantastic. He claims his larder can do more than 200 miles an hour. And he was keen to demonstrate his donutting prowess. Lada, eh? Lada. <laughs> Who would have known that a Lada could do that?